Hey guys, hope you're all doing well. Now for today's video, we're going to be discussing one of the largest animals on InGen's list. A dinosaur that's become iconic to this wider franchise and is instantly recognizable to everyone who's gotten a chance to see the films. Few other clones hold a candle to this particular animal's size, and its inclusion in the first, third, and fifth entries in the movie series have been highlights of each respective story. This is one of the most famous animals of the Jurassic period. The dinosaur paleontologists have named the Arm Lizard. Brachiosaurus was a member of the Brachiosauridae family, and it was partially discovered in 1900 by Elmer S. Riggs. Known to have roamed the Great Morrison Formation over 150 million years ago, Brachiosaurus was noted early on as having a distinctively long neck in proportion to its much smaller skull. The image of its long neck standing up in a rather straight position is what's led scientists to name it Brachia, or arm in English. Another odd trait for this old creature was the fact that the nasal openings were placed on top of its head instead of the end of its snout like most other animals. Initially, many believed this to be an adaptation that would have aided in amphibious behavior, but that thought process has changed greatly in the modern day. Being a large sauropod in the late Jurassic, Brachiosaurus had little enemies to worry about back in their day. Sharing the world with carnivores like Allosaurus and Ceratosaurus, nothing was truly big enough to stand a chance against the titanic plant eater. Scientists believe that the sheer visual presence and massive body was enough to steer carnivores away from even attempting an attack. Now, Brachiosaurus had a skull that has essentially been described as an intermediary structure between that of Giraffa Titan and Camarasaurus. In fact, at one point in time, the African species Giraffa Titan was believed to have been a species of Brachiosaur itself. Notable differences between these few species are quite evident to paleontologists, but one easy way to really get into some simple detail between skulls would be the number of teeth that each animal has. Each maxilla in Brachiosaurus had room for about 14 or 15 teeth, while the smaller Camarasaurus had 8 to 10, and Giraffa Titan had around 11. Brachiosaurus also has the distinction of being a sauropod that has considerably longer forelimbs than its hind limbs, giving it a rather tall appearance in comparison to similar animals like Apatosaurus. Weight estimates for these dinosaurs comes in at around 31 to 64 short tons, and they are believed to have grown around 21 meters or 69 feet in length. The animal's diet likely consisted of gingos, conifers, larger cycads, and tree ferns. And being the massive creature that it is, every day Brachiosaurus would need to take in quite a lot of calories to survive. It has even been estimated before in the past that a 40-ton brachy would roughly have to eat about half a ton of food a day for its dietary needs to be met, meaning this dinosaur would spend most of its life grazing rather than doing much else. Now, long after this animal fell into extinction, John Hammond, an engine scientist, unearthed amber that contained this ancient animal's blood trapped in dead mosquitoes. After extracting what they could, they filled in the dinosaur's genetic code with amphibian DNA, and successfully created their very own genetically engineered Brachiosaur. <laughs> Jurassic Park's Brachiosaurus were first bred on Isla Sorna by the genetics company. In the movie canon, the first time we would get to see a Brachiosaurus was on Isla Nublar in the original Jurassic Park. Here we can see that Injun's Brachiosaurs are predominantly gray and possess the ability to rear up on their hind legs and even wade in large bodies of shallow water. On Site B, during the events of Jurassic Park 3, we can see some different individuals with a red pattern adorning their heads while Grant and the Kirbys move down the river and out towards the coast. It's widely accepted that these are the probable males of the dinosaur group. In Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, we're shown more brachiosaurs that look far more similar to the 93 counterparts from the original park. However, an additional teal coloring on the tops of their heads gives them a distinct new look that could either be attributed to the clone's age or possibly a different breed. They're said to grow to be around 21.5 meters in length and weigh up to 56 tons. The last bit of confirmed information that we have on this individual species is that some embryos of the animal were safely taken away from the Lockwood estate at the end of the film. But even before that, it is revealed that one Brachiosaurus was actually saved and transported off of Isla Nublar. This information can be found on the Arcadia's manifest in the film. 
Personally, Brachiosaurus has always been one of my favorite herbivores in the entire Jurassic Park series, and its inclusion in Fallen Kingdom was something that I was very happy to see on the big screen. To me, the death of the Brachiosaurus was my favorite moment in the entire film, and I know that many others have enjoyed it just as much as well. But what do all of you guys think? How much do you appreciate the Jurassic Park Brachiosaurus? Is it your favorite sauropod in the franchise, or are you a bigger fan of something like Apatosaurus or Mamenchisaurus? Whatever your thoughts and opinions may be, I'd love to hear them in the comments down below. Now before I go, I want to thank my game wardens, like Stefan Seemers, as well as all of my engine executives, like Ari Rosenbaum. I'd also like to thank all of my park workers and engine hunters as well. Julian Coates, Kyle German, Christos Jackson, and Mike Connor. Words can't really express how awesome it is to have you guys tell me how much you enjoy the stuff I do, and I seriously am extremely thankful for everything that you guys do to help. Honestly, it means the world. Now I'd like to thank you all for watching this video, and hope that you all enjoy today's content. If you feel like I deserve it, I'd appreciate the like and hope that you'll consider subscribing if you're interested in hearing from me again. I'll see you all in the next video, guys. And as always, take it easy.